Once again for being in his presence. The Bible says in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. Well, you know, before I go into the message, I want to share a very friendly joke. And this joke is really geared to trust. So I heard about this man that fell off a cliff. And during the process of him falling, he was able to grab hold of a limb. So he's holding on to this limb, and he's crying out to the Lord, Lord, forgive me for all the things I've done. Lord Jesus, help me. God, help me. And then suddenly you hear a voice says, let go. The man says, God, if you hear me, please help me. Another voice took place and said, let go. The man says, is there someone else up there? <laughs> Trust. Is there someone else up there? That's what we need to do. <clears throat> when he says, let go, we need to learn to trust. And that's not my message on this morning. The message I'm going to share is based on the text of scripture that was read by Bible. But I want to encourage you this morning, Trinity, to let go. Let go of the things that are keeping you what? Bound. Let go of the things that are holding you back to glorify your Father in heaven. Let go and trust and believe. If he said it in his word, if he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all, above all that we ask or think, he says it's all according to the power that worketh within you. But you have to let go. You have to forget what? Those former things behind. behind and, and forget those former things, okay, that are behind. Paul says, I press. I press where? Towards the goal of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Pressing beyond what? Your own natural understanding and trusting that if he said it in this word, it shall come to pass. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving God, I'm so thankful for you allowing me to uh, remember this whole idea of trust. And not really trusting to my own understanding, but trusting towards yours. And even, even as I shared the, the joke this morning about the man holding on, he would not let go because he didn't have trust in God. So I pray, oh God, that my friends on this morning, dear Lord, would really take heed to this word, trust, and that they will go back for themselves and pray and repent and ask God for forgiveness for not trusting you wholeheartedly. Lord, I pray, oh God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart yes. would truly be acceptable in your sight. Father God, for you are my strength, you are my redeemer, and you are my soul-coming king. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning we want to focus on Luke 19, uh, verses 37 through 42. And if I may leave a thought with you on this morning, it will be weeping for the cities. Now, if we think back on what transpired prior to the story on this morning, Jesus was going through Bethpage and going through Bethany as he was traveling through the Mount of Olives as he was preparing himself to go for Kidron. Jesus had given instructions to two of his disciples. The instructions that were given unto his disciples, he says, go ahead of me, and there you will find a colt or donkey, and it will be tied up. Jesus says, unloose that colt or that donkey, and if anyone asks why are you doing this, tell them that I said so. So the disciples proceeded to follow his instructions. Do you think they trusted him? I truly believe they did. And as they unloosed that donkey, they brought him towards Jesus, right? And they sat his, their clothes or their jackets, as, as some text of scriptures would say, and they threw their jackets onto the ground. And as they proceeded to put Jesus up on that particular donkey, and Jesus proceeded to ride into Jerusalem, that city. And as people are standing there, 
they're throwing the branches, the palms in the street. Can you envision that now? As Jesus is riding into the city of Newburgh, and the people are praising him. They're rejoicing, they're shouting. The story of the triumph entry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what does this have to do with weeping for the cities? Well, it has a lot to do with weeping for the cities. When is the last time you wept for Newburgh? We hear stories day in and day out. Newspapers, files news. Are you weeping for the city of Newburgh? Are you weeping for the surrounding cities? Poughkeepsie? What about Fishkill? What about all the other areas going south? What about the places going north? Knowing that everything that has transpired, even during this period of time, is no different than what's going on today. The Bible says what? He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The only difference that's going on is just, we're just dealing with a new, with a, 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 and I'm not glorifying in the enemy, but a more cunning enemy right now. Mm -hmm. Where he's deceiving the people. Deceiving them, telling them, oh, you don't need to go to prayer meeting. Someone else will go. Deceiving them, oh, you don't need to fellowship. I'll see my brother and sister on Sunday morning. Oh, I don't need to come to prayer and praise. That's a waste of time. That's how the enemy is deceiving you. Knowing that this is the time when you come to, when we come together as the body of Christ, the Bible says we are sharpening one another's iron. Mm. We're building each other up. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 10 and 25, forsake not the assembling amongst the saints. He says that because that's the time for us to come to what? To worship and gather and to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I say all that because Jesus knew what was going to transpire, the weeping process. Now, there's many beautiful stories in the gospel. But think about this one particular story. This had to be the most precious, most personal story in the gospel. Here we see Jesus weeping over the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the capital, the temple, the place of the religious people. The place where scholars came. The place of wealth. And he knew that this was going to be his last time going through his city before his crucifixion was going to take place. Mm -hmm. However, Jesus still wept for the people. Now, can you imagine that? Jesus One who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteous. One who did healing. One who <laughs> raised his friends back from the dead. And here he is weeping. Think about it. Parents, how do you feel when your child is weeping? It hurts. <clears throat> But to see a man weeping, that's a whole different story. Mm. We as men, I'm not going to cry in public. Why? It's not, it's not proper for men to be weeping in public. But to see a child, oh, come baby, come on honey, oh. But what about when a man is weeping, crying out? So can you envision our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, weeping? Can you envision him crying out for Jerusalem? You know, they say that um, men, we, uh, because of our nature, we will weep in, 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 in more of a private environment or a private setting. 
but weeping in a public setting. That's just not cool. But if our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ can do it, why can't we? Our, 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 our Savior, one who's come, coming to take the sins from this sin-sick world. So let's talk a little bit about weeping. We all can wrap our minds around the word weeping. So let me just fill you in on a few of my thoughts and explanations on weeping. Weeping is shedding of tears, silent tears, tears which well up in your eyes and overflow and rolls down your cheeks. <laughs> weeping together with visible and audible emotion. Jesus tells us here again, as I stated earlier, in John's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 33, the famous and familiar passage about Lazarus. The brother and of Mary and of Martha, who was now dead, had been dead for some days and was in the grave. Mm. The sisters were weeping sadly over their brother's decease. Jesus came four days later. And Jesus showed compassion. That same compassion that Jesus showed is the same compassion we need to be showing for those strangers that we may not even know that we are entertaining in our midst. Not even knowing why they're in this condition. We just see them the way they are, down and out. That same compassion we need to have for one another here in the body of Christ, especially here in Trinity. We need to have that same compassion for our loved ones who are not saved, who, are, who have not received salvation. That same compassion is what Jesus has displayed for his friend. Jesus also showed emotion. Let me tell you something. That's a characteristic that God has given us, brother. Emotions. Yes, it is. Again, men, don't beat me up later. But we as men, oh, I'm not showing any emotions. I'm a man. I'm not supposed to let people see me differently. No. God has given us that characteristic. Showing emotion. It's okay. And I'll be the first to put up both hands. I'm a crier. And that's okay. Me too. Amen. <laughs> I don't mind. Because it's good for me. Because I need to release every so often. I'm crying out unto my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who saved and set me free, who put my feet back on a solid ground so I can worship him freely, so I can praise him for what he's done in my life. That's why I live Jesus showed that same emotion for his friend. And then verse 33, in that chapter, it says Jesus wept. The shortest verse in the Bible. And I question myself, does the body of Christ know that? Really? Two words, Jesus wept. He wept for his friend. And you probably would think that Jesus would be rejoicing, right? I mean, he made it very clear to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So he knew that his friend was going to be present with him. You would think Jesus would be rejoicing. No. They said Jesus broke out with a violent wept. Violent wept. Crying for his friend because he loved him. And he knew that he was going to miss him. But knowing that the power of God that is upon him, 
he knew he was going to also raise him. Now, we didn't know that. We only know it because we read it in the story that he raised his friend from the dead. So for days it will go on and to know that Christ was ever present. For us, for us to know that even on today, our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ is raising us from the dead. Hello? Yes, we're all dead in our sins at one time, mm -hmm. and there's still others who are still dead in their sins. But thanks be to God for our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, who is still raising individuals up out of the mock and the miry, no matter what it may be, because we all have fallen short and still <coughs> are falling short of his glory. Mm -hmm. So we do thank and praise God for the resurrection of our brother. It also tells us here in Luke 19, verses 42 through 44, Jesus said very clear, you will, be, you will probably be thinking again about me rejoicing. But, not so. Jesus says, if you have known, even you, especially in this, your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Mm. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side. This is Luke 19, 42 through 44. And level you and your children within, your, within you to the ground. Now, what's very interesting is Jesus is sharing this text of scripture in the New Testament. But guess what? It was fulfilled already in what? The Old Testament. He's saying here, they will, they will not leave you in one and a stone upon you because you did not know the time of your visitation. You know, if the, if the, if the, if the Jewish heritage would have only known during that time of visitation, none of this would have taken place. But they did not know. And this is why he's saying that if they would have known during the time of the visitation, they would have received him. Jesus knew already. And this is another, why, another reason why Jesus was weeping. Because they didn't know. And he knew what was going to happen. Even back then. But then here it is. We're going to the 21st century. And he shared a story in the New Testament about his friend who he wept over. But knowing that he was weeping for Jerusalem, if they only knew what was going to happen, if they only knew that they were going to be destroyed. And this is the same reasons why we need to weep for Newburgh. Yes. The enemy is running rapid. Hello? But is there a bomb in Gilead? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. To heal the sin sick soul? I truly believe so. As long as the prayer warriors come together and gather and just start pulling out strongholds and start casting out the, those things that's going on within the city. That's that same compassion again, Trinity, we need to have for our, our city. S especially for our, our brothers and sisters who are ministering, who, church, who, you know, who have churches within the city of, of Newburgh. They're seeing it on a day-to-day -day basis, you know? But praise be to God that um, we, 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 we can come into agreement on, on, on what they're being challenged with. So again, Jesus knew because they were blind to his nature and they were blind to his kingdom. And again, as a result, he knew they were going to be destroyed. So in my conclusion, the day of visitation. It says here again, what a tragedy that the Jewish nation did not know their king had came to them. They came to them, but they didn't know. But when he comes again, 
will he really find faith on the earth? When he comes again. You know, again, I'm sure many of you understand the, the promise that's been given unto Abraham. Mm. Let me tell you something. That promise that's been given unto Abraham, it still exists even on today for the Jewish heritage. God's not a man that should lie, nor a son of man that should repent. If he said it, so be it. That promise is still going on even on today. But Jesus says here, will they be faithful? Or will he find them faithful when he comes back onto this earth? Again, this is why our Lord is saying that Jesus Christ had wept. He saw the terrible judgment that was coming to the city and to the people. Again, as I'm putting this message together on last week and I'm praying and, 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 um, and really asking God to, to give me a word. Give me a word for today. Give me a word that's relevant. Give me a word that's going to prick and convict the hearts of the people. Give me a word, oh God, that the people will go back. As the scriptures say, did not our hearts burn within us? Why do I say that? Because again, we as the body of Christ, not Trinity United Methodist Parish, but the body of the Lord of, 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 of the universal church, should be crying out for those who are less fortunate than we are. And I say that because God is so good. God all the time. And all the time, God is good. I say that because we could come in and thank you for praying that prayer, Lord, because that is so true about we're able to come in here and to worship him and, and, and free, uh, you know, worship him freely. We don't have to worry about anyone coming in here and kicking down the doors and, and, and putting us in cuffs and chains which the Bible talks about also. Paul says, I was a prisoner for Christ. Yeah. But that's not my point. My point is that we will start crying out. Yeah. Crying out for our, well, I'll say residency because this is where we currently live, even though our residence is, is in heaven, but our physical residency is here in, 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 in this part of the country, crying out for new birth. And I says, Lord, give me a word. Give me a word, Father, that the people of God will go back and repent. Yeah. Go back and repent, <laughs> fall on their knees and says, Lord, forgive me for not praying. <laughs> for not praying for our government in the city of Newburgh, our police officers. You know, I, I get a, a, a monthly newsletter from, from, from Newburgh Police Department. And... Um, the first time I read it, it was pretty shocking because I wasn't familiar with um, the, what has uh, transpired in, in, in the city of Newburgh over the years. To know that um, the, the pay cut, uh, I mean the, the, the pay, they've cut their pay. Um, officers um, have left this area to go work somewhere else because again, fearful of not being, fearful that they may not make it home one day. Um, just a lot of things and I was like, wow, Lord, here it is. You know, you got me ministering here in, in, in this part of the country, and, and I'm hearing all these different uh, connotations about Newburgh. And I'm like, but what are the people of God doing, oh God? You know, some people say, oh, Newburgh is like the sixth borough. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> you know? Uh oh. So, so <laughs> I'm praying as I'm, as I'm writing this message. I'm like, Lord, touch the hearts of the people. So they will start crying out for Newburgh. Yeah. Because guess what? Didn't know different than we are. God loves everyone. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> whether they live in the city or whether they live in the town. And guess what I think is our obligation for us to continue to pray, seek his face, turn from our wicked ways. He says, and then we will hear from heaven, and then he will what? Heal the land. Yeah. If Trinity United Methodist Parish who will call by my name, will humble themselves. That's what he said in his word. Okay, he doesn't say Trinity United Methodist Parish. He says, if my people, that's you and I. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. 
So that's my desire. That's my prayer. And I'm writing. I'm typing. I'm like, okay, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So I do pray that you'll go back. Read the scriptures. And trust God. And ask God to minister to your heart. And pray. So again, the day of visitation. Right? It says, our Lord and Savior wept over Jerusalem because he knew that a terrible judgment was coming to the city and to the people. It also says that the people were prepared hundreds and hundreds of years ago. All the prophets. So in other words, no one had no exception at all. He said they all knew the identity of Christ. And I'm sure many of us are sitting here on this morning know that our Lord and Savior was spoken upon in the Old Testament. So they knew. Okay? But one thing they did not know were these two verses, two words in this one verse. That Jesus wept. So finally, my friends, there's three things I want you to ponder on as you go throughout the remainder of this week. One is that Jesus wept. He wept for his friend. He wept for Jerusalem. The second I need you to ponder on are these tears tell us all. The tears. I spoke about the tears. I'm sure you could fill in blanks when I gave you my analogy what I think tears are. Mm. And everyone has their own tears that are sitting here on this morning. I'm sure we can go further into that. And then finally, what is ahead for every unrepentant sinner? What is ahead? And this is the reason why we need to cry out for our loved ones, our friends, our co-workers, mm -hmm. yeah, and even the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Oh, the body of Christ, I think they will say, he says, unrepented sins. He says, we need to cry out for unrepented sins. <coughs> and that includes us. Because mm -hmm. the Bible says, for all have sinned and falling short of his glory. But the most important thing is going back to our Father and confessing our sins when he said he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's you and I. He already knows. He just wants you to confess because he says he will take that sin and toss it in the sea of forgiveness and guess what, saints of God, he will not remember it anymore. The only one who brings that sin back up is you and I. Yeah. And now we become what? Sin conscious. Yes. And that brings me to prepare for our Holy Communion. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we are so thankful once again, Lord. I do thank and pray you for uh, the message that you allowed me to speak to the people of God on this morning, Father. And I, and I do pray, oh God, that they will go back and study the word for themselves because the information you have given me first has been first-hand, dear Lord, and now I've given to them is second-hand. But knowing that you are no respected person, when they go back and study the scriptures for themselves, I pray that they will pick up the phone and say, let me share something with what Pastor Mike shared on this morning, and let me, let me tell you my revelation about the scripture. Praise be to God. And that's what we should be doing as the body of Christ fellowshipping with one another over the word of God. Mm. Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thanks be to God again.